Can't find my ear. They were sitting up there. I don't know. There was some in that bag. They were bad. Last night. Dr. Wright, we're live. Dr. Sarita Wright. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? We can, but we're live. Good afternoon. We're going to give people an opportunity to jump in with us. Hello, hello, and hello. Just go ahead. We're waiting for people to kind of join with us for a second. Dr. Wright, let's start with you. You want to just open us up with the word of prayer, please? Absolutely. Father, we just glorify you and we honor you. We thank you, oh God, for such an awesome time. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to come before you and just to expound and to speak wisdom and life and just to bring some encouragement to those that have tuned in on this afternoon. Father, we pray that you'll continue to order our steps. Lord, you lead, guide, and direct us, and we'll be ever careful to give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Um, come on, Dr. Wright, just share with us a little bit. Let's just start off and just check check in um, with each other. Let's just about where we are, what we're doing. Um, I know I'm trying to get in. Dallas, I am getting uh, acclimated uh, to, I think, this three and a half, almost four weeks now of being in the shelter in. I miss seeing my people, um, but I'm healthy. I'm glad to be COVID free, and I'm glad to, um, thus far, everyone that I know my members are are the same. So I'm very, very grateful about that. How about for you? Absolutely. It's been really challenging here in Kansas City. Um, just getting people to really follow the rules. <laughs> what it takes to be safe. Unfortunately, uh, one of our co-ministers, uh, uh, pastor here locally, was an EMT and he uh, transitioned on yesterday due to COVID-19. And it's a very sad time for us uh, just knowing somebody that close to us. And the other side of that is his wife also is has been impacted and, and she was released from the hospital on yesterday to come mm -hmm. home and find out that her partner of all these years has transitioned on because of the disease. And so we're prayerful for the Birmingham family. Um, food pantry, we're, we're working very diligently with the food pantry to make sure that the needs, those essential needs are met for the families in the community to have 
the, you know, have access to the food and have it readily. We are in a suburban community and mm. a lot of, um, a lot of the, the transportation is the public transportation, the bus. Um, and then it's also, um, a community that lacks some of the essentials as far as like the grocery store. And so it's really a blessing to be able to provide this to them and to provide it to them safely. And it, it's, it's a change because it's, it's different from what we've done in the past, but to God be the glory, we're making it happen. People are still trying to get in and they're not able to. Kind of checked in. We've heard um, from myself, and we've heard from from Dr. Wright. Just checking in. Okay. Um. Hey. Hey, everybody. Um. We're doing the same here, I guess, here in Dallas, uh, attempting to um, adjust to the new norm. Um. Helping the community, making sure that everyone is well, calling and checking in. And uh, again, I, I agree with you, um, Dr. Wright making sure that everyone follow the rules so that we can flatten the curve. Um, because everyone is so used to getting out and being out and doing what they want to do. And now we're restricted to certain areas and certain things. And, you know, it's just, it's something to do. But um, I believe that once we get over this, we're going to be better for it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then to people are passing through the myths, the 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 thought process of it only impacts certain certain ethnicities, that it only impacts certain age groups. Um, we've had young ones here, we've had older ones here that have been significantly impacted. And right. So not playing favors. It it goes for it's 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 attacking whoever and whatever. And so we have to be wise, which is one of the themes for our session on today, talking about the wisdom. God gives us wisdom. He said in his word that he gives us wisdom yeah. in all things. Yeah, I'm really glad that you, you said that part because um, what I found is that African-Americans especially, we are affected disproportionately in regard to this. I'm not even certain if we even make up 20% of the population of America, but yet we find in our cities that um, African-Americans are being affected by this. Some In some cities, 40%, in some cities, it's 60%, but the number mm -hmm. is just extremely too high. And um, I, I remember when COVID, I think, began to first kind of hit the news, you know, people, um, I remember seeing on polls, people saying, oh, well, we don't know any black people that's infected. No black people are getting. But the truth about the matter of it is, is that we seldom hear about African-Americans um, in the news unless there's something dealing with a crime, you know, a murder, you know, something that's it, that's extremely negative. And so for us to not hear about uh, African-Americans being um, infected in the news shouldn't shouldn't have been a surprise to us. I, and, and I really hate so many of our people um, have become infected or I still go out to the grocery stores, you know, or go out, you know, and, and we have no mask on, we have no gloves. I mean, and even, I mean, no piece of cloth around us or anything, not, it's still not taking any precautions. And, and, and this is, this is just too serious um, for us at this time. <laughs> I have to be absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we are. Um, I think I was. What is it about a month ago? Or maybe, maybe longer. In February, at the end of February, beginning of March, I was in the hairdresser, um, a hair salon, and I heard that same statement. Oh, it's not affecting us. And I said, okay, show. Can you show me proof? Can you give me some facts? Can you show me what the doctors are saying? And of course, no one could prove that. But now we see here, 
um, seven, what is it, 60, 65% are being affected by it now in some cities, um, more, a lot more than that. So um, I think we have to dispel some of those myths and really read and, and watch the news, not all the time, but watch um, the credible um, resources. It's crazy. And two, and two, we have to be responsible with what's being reported. Um, I uh, I like to laugh, and there have been, you know, sometimes I uh, I send things through social media just just to laugh because that's what keeps me going is to laugh. Um, you know, I'm, but it disturbs me that um, a number. of of people have the the mindset that they're they're getting poor information or they're not getting the right information and they're passing mm-hmm. on things just because someone sends it just because someone sends it first of all it's not a credible source mm-hmm. second of all if it's not um a lifestyle that you have followed you have to yeah. check the source and see what's going on and and there are right. our, our young people our young people, um, we have a park here in Kansas City called Swope Park, and it is notorious, uh, not notorious for, but it is a, a, a very familiar park. And on Sundays, it's not uncommon for the families to gather and go out to the park and barbecue. Well, um, Saturday before last, we had 70 degree weather, absolutely beautiful. And you would have thought it was back in the 70s. The only things I was missing was my dominoes, you know, to go out <laughs> <laughs> because everybody was out there like, hey, we back in the day, and I'm going, uh, uh-uh. uh. <laughs> Basketball. Right. Well, no, here we were shut down the whole weekend. Oh wow. No parks in Dallas uh, were were open. Well, ours just recently closed. In fact, in this last weekend, they've closed. And yeah. our mayor has been um he's been very wise about trying to make families aware and and make families understand the importance of the social distancing mm-hmm. and um uh, my i my my husband called my daughter and said put our grandchildren on the front porch and she said why he said because we're coming to visit <laughs> and so it was a mm-hmm. little difficult pulling up and waving at your grandchildren on the porch. And one of my grandsons said, but you're not going to come in and play with me. No, we can't do that right now. We have to, you know, we have to be wise and that's kind of difficult. And I get that. And we love our families, but we have to be wise. We, we have to be wise and, and, and use, what was it grandma used to say? An ounce of precautions worth a pound of cure. Pound of, yes. 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 Yeah. Um, I I like that. And I want want to thank those who are joining us, whose names I see. Hello, Natalie Davis, um, uh, Lisa Green, Carol Sanders, Miles, uh, Joyce Dalton, Henson, Mertha Akins. Thank you all for joining us. I know there's some others of you that are are joining us via stream. Um, Just let us know that you're present. Carol Sanders, Miles, I see that you say that you think so many are getting the wrong information and they don't know how to decipher what is true. I want to jump on that, right? Um, I, 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 it, and I almost hate to say this, um, but Governor Cuomo has almost become my official source of information. You know, is that you know the briefings that have been that that have come on. It's kind of like okay, you can listen to it. Dr. Fauci only gets you know a certain amount of time, and then you know, <laughs> stuff. And it's like, is is this real? What we're listening to, you know, what's truth? And then, you know, if I listen to, um, you know, um, our local news is not necessarily lining up with what we hear on the national level. I mean, what what is it like for for um, you all over there in Kansas and anybody else? You know, y- y'all y'all hit us up here on Facebook. Those of y'all who are streaming with us, I mean, it's kind of like who, who are you trusting? Who are you finding your reliable information from? Who, who are you getting your reliable, you know, stuff from? You just got a question in. Wow. It said people are okay. Yeah, we just got another question in. How do we help our communities? I I missed it. What was the question? How do we help our communities? 
I, I came believe, from Tawana um, Casey. I believe that one of the best ways for us to help our communities is to continue to emphasize the importance of listening, continue to emphasize the importance of following directions. Um, this is not something where we can cut corners. It's mm. but, but, but who do they listen to? Who do we tell our community to listen to? I mean, do we tell, I mean, who? First and foremost, prayerfully, the leadership is, is listening and, and, and keeping up um, and can be a viable source for them. Um, hmm. I agree with you. I, I kind of watch Governor Cuomo myself. <laughs> exactly. Because now I understand then, he's about to be fired himself. So, um, well, he got a backtrack on that. Ah. Uh, yeah, and that's the thing I'm hearing. You're going back and forth. Okay, maybe not. Yes, you don't know what to believe. But here, when you look at, listen, at um, Comey, he has been consistent throughout all of this. Right. And um, I think it's it's fair to say, I shouldn't say this for local or even our state, but um, listening to him gives me guidance and he lets me know what I can share with 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 the church and my own community. Because I think here in Texas, we're what, two weeks behind? Everyone else are a week and a half behind um, the spread. So yeah, we definitely have to be, I don't, I don't know any, if we begin to listen to um, the White House, I should say, um, we're not getting all the information or we're hearing bits and pieces of it or we're, we're hearing one day we hear one thing and then the next day they're backtracked. So I'm not sure if we are, we're ha we have all the information that we need well, in some cases. Because I, I was in, in my heart of heart, I want to say we have to remain prayerful, but I received Definitely. Uh, I received an invitation and it was come attend uh, this event uh, that all the first ladies are going to be praying for a specific organization and I won't call names. And, and so I responded to the individual that sent me the invitation and I said, can we just come together and pray? It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a specific organization. Can they get a prayer through? Um, first and foremost, we should have been praying. Absolutely. Why do we have to rely on a crisis to bring us to our knees? Then we become so spiritually minded, we're no earthly good, because then there are those people that say that God is doing this to us so that we will pray. I disagree. I don't believe that God needs to scare the hell out of us for us to make a decision. <laughs> we need to make a decision because we choose to make a decision. Right. I, be saved because I want to be saved, not because right. you died last week, or not because <laughs> Chucky got chased down the week before. I want to be saved. Period. Right. Hey, so it's so a choice. So, so you're saying it's a choice. Yeah, exactly. And so God don't have to kill half the nation for me to make a decision. I was wow I was on the first on the first wow. call. So wow. we yes, we do have to be prayerful. But when you don't have a relationship, what are you hearing? What voice are you hearing? Oh, that's deeper. If you've not connected and established a relationship, you're going to hear a lot of little voices. <laughs> wow. Then we make excuses for why we drop the ball. Well, I heard in my spirit, who did you hear from? So yes, we do have to be prayerful, but we have to be wise and we have to be connected. When we don't remain connected and establish that relationship with God, we'll hear anything that's coming down the pipes. Mm. Wow. We're here and we're listening to anything, right? Absolutely. Hmm. And so that, what is the what is the role 
now that we're in this pandemic or crisis, what is the role of the church since we can't go into the building? The role of the church. Well, go ahead, Pastor Burns. I'm sorry. I'm not even allowing you a chance to say it. I'm, I'm fine. You go ahead. You can't be cute through the whole process. <laughs> <laughs> but as a church, we, we must be touchable. We mm-hmm. must be reachable. We must be transparent. We cannot be... Uh, brother so-and-so up here, uh, church mother up here. We have, we, we have to all, this, this thing has got us all on an even playing field. Thank Mm -hmm. God I'm a pastor. But at the end of the day, that's not going to stop me from sick. Parent with you and, and be honest enough with you to say, Hey, this has got me worried. Hey, I'm I'm a little concerned about this. I'm concerned that it has hit my neighborhood. I'm concerned that it has, it has impacted somebody that I know and love. I'm yeah. concerned too. Again, we can't be so spiritually minded. We know earthly good. Right. Yeah. And, and thank you for that because um um I I think yes, and my members know my members know this. I miss seeing their faces. Okay. Yeah. I do not miss seeing their faces to the point of putting them in danger. That's now, right. So, so corporate worship, yes, you know, we're, we're, we're you know, we, we can, we'll find ways to worship and to fellowship. But I believe that this is a time that the church's head needs to stand strong and, and show that, hey, we are a church, not because of, of Sunday worship. We are a church because of who we, because of our presence for you in the community. Do you, do you, this is when I believe that the, the people need to see that the church is who they've been preaching about all these years. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. What does that look like though? It looks like, here's something that I did. Um, I got, uh, I went through and I pulled up names and addresses Mm -hmm. and I went to the store and I bought cards and I did a mass mailing and I sent cards out and our phones lit up with, wow, we got a card from you today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank Mm -hmm. you for the card. Uh, I'm I'm, I'm so glad you were thinking about me. I was thinking about you guys. Yes. Granted, Again, we've got to come outside of not dismissing the prayer line, but we got to come outside of that and touch somebody. That's good. And one of the people <laughs> came to the food pantry yesterday and mm-hmm. she was walking into putting on her mask and her gloves to work. And she said, Pastor, I got a card from you in the mail yesterday. Like I didn't know I sent a card. <laughs> I said, it's wonderful. Right. Said, well, Pastor, that was just great. And I said, mm-hmm. well, hey, I'm glad you know. She said, I love cards. Yeah. You know the woman loved cards. But I feel like this. In a time when I can't be touched, yeah. I can be touched. And she can reach and get that card and be personal with that card and look at that card and say, wow, my pastor sent this to me. Right. And thank you. And thank you for that, um, Dr. Wright, because this is my thing. You know, um, all churches aren't, aren't able to feed. All right. But still, you can pick up the phone and call your members. Can't, can't you? That's, that's right. Them? Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, maybe you can't maybe you can't give groceries to an entire community. But surely you can buy a bag of beans for some senior person. That's you know, right. That's that's a part of your community. You know that it could be. You know you don't have to touch nobody to see that. Okay, let's go. We can still send somebody there to go get their yard cut. There's just so many things. Mail the card, say hello. But but to go now and just be in hiding and saying, oh yeah, we we well, I'm 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 socially distancing. No, 
people. The people need the church right now. If they never needed to hear from their pastor before, they need to hear from their pastor. If they never needed to hear from their music minister before, they need to hear from them now. You know, that's right. Somebody who's a vocalist, you can pick up the phone and, and just sing a song to somebody. You, you see what yeah. I'm saying? That's that's good. That you might not have a whole lot of fun, you know, the means to be, but but we have the means to do something that pushes yeah. us outside of quote what we do on Sunday morning. That's and right. I think that this is just not the time for the church to stick its head in the sand and say that they're sheltering in like everybody else. That that's, that's a right. bunch of all. Yeah, right. still, yeah. That, that still needs to be done. People are hurting right now. Yeah. And, and what we gonna we waiting to what everybody get here? <laughs> Ain't nobody else hurting. Ain't right. nobody else hungry. And now we got a word from the Lord. Well, I don't know about you, but if that's the only time we gonna speak, then I don't need you to speak. You see what I'm saying? Right. What, right. what is the word? Is there a bomb now in Gilead? You know, yeah. something now that the yeah. church can do to be able to meet my needs. Yes. That's right. Yeah. I got. Got well, a note. That question. Uh, who else asked that? See y'all the main. I, I actually, there's an, a someone just posted said I love cards and I do send them. Um, Amen. They're they're motivated by it, and when you hear we we use this something um the class leader style in our church where we appoint people to mm -hmm. call every member as well as or I call every member to check on them weekly. Um, we just want to make sure that everyone is safe during this time and understanding that you're not alone. Right. Right. And whatever you want to say, just say it. Just I know you're frustrated. I know you feel lonely. We're here to talk to you. Yeah. Everyone, everyone wants to be heard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, just be honest. Um, if you're afraid, okay, how can we get you through this? What can we do to help you? If you're hungry, let us bring you some food. Um, we, we have to, the building does not dictate what the church is. Correct. And who yeah. the church is. So we, we are the church, the body. We're the church. So let's do what the church is supposed to do. Good the purpose right. of the church is move toward what God has called us to do, right? Yes. Yeah, and Dr. Bradford, you know, I, I, I'm almost thinking, and 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 I, I would hate to push it this far to say this, but but perhaps God was tired of, of church folk too. You see what I'm saying? You know, yeah. people want to talk about oh, he had to shut down this, he had to shut down that, he had to shut down. He had to. I think God perhaps had to shut down some of our churches too, because it, it was like we just caught up in you know just doing, just just to showing up and not right. being who God wanted us to be. But now what? We got to figure, we, we got to, everybody got to figure this thing out. What, what do you say? We have to now think outside the box? Come on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Find, find new ways to connect. Absolutely. New ways to share, new ways to love, new ways to embrace. Um, okay, you don't want to talk to me, but now we've got to figure out ways how to talk to each other. Right? Now you take that back into the house. Come on, We've got to figure out how to talk to each other because we are now confined in a space, confined in a space to where uh, we don't have an option of whether or not we're gonna get along. We got to figure out a way to get along. Yeah. The wow. Knowing oh. that, that that becomes an even greater thing because guess what? Now I'm gonna flip the script again. Come on. While you were sending Chucky to school, uh -oh. and Chucky was acting a fool in school. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Don't get my teachers on. Oh, all uh -oh. right, you have uh -oh. You have, uh -oh. you have uh -oh. messed us up now. Uh -oh. Chucky doesn't want to answer protocol. Chucky doesn't want to obey. You stuck with Chucky. You have messed us up in the house. And now you got to deal with Chucky. The church gonna have to help you deal with Chucky. Cause A, you gonna be wearing orange. You gonna be <laughs> in hold up. Step, step up the orange. Step up the orange. Hold oh, that's, my favorite wait, wait, wait. Color. that's my favorite color. So you gonna you gonna be wearing that prison orange and you gonna be on lockdown in another capacity because you have not taken the time to deal with Chucky. Wait, why? But why? Why, Dr. Wright, why? 
Because, you, because you're able to just put them out. Because you had selective amnesia and you chose not to deal with Chucky. You didn't think that was man, hold on a second. Now, there ain't no lack of amnesia. That folk are going up to the school, told folk that, that Chucky didn't act like that at home. Oh, no. Why? Okay. Or they went at home to see how Chucky was acting. Yeah, but you know Chucky was tearing up stuff at the house. That's what you got. That's why you got to buy a new um living room suit every year and a half because Chucky done tore it up. You know. But but, here's, the thing, oh. here's the thing that's just um, Dr. Wright just said. <laughs> they have selected. Well, I'm gonna add to it. Selective amnesia. Selective amnesia. <laughs> so when I send my children to school, I expect the teacher to deal with their shenanigans. Oh, you go and mess. However, now that they're in a, a confined space, now I have mm -hmm. the parent, I have to deal with not only their behavior or their, mm -hmm. their menace, mm -hmm. <laughs> menaces, but I have to also deal with the classwork. Yes, that I don't now, know how to do because <laughs> I chose to be a dummy in class too. Wait a minute, but hold up, but hold up. Wait a minute, but but hi, but now parents can't even deal with the classwork because Chucky won't even be still um, from, for you to even but no, Chucky, but but Remember, way. Chucky doesn't act like that at school. I don't know what's gotten into Chucky. He doesn't act he doesn't act like that at school. So I mean, at home, I'm 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 surprised. Now I go to the school and I have to act like I'm a heathen <laughs> with my rollers in my hair, and my flip flops on. My I'm going to school. Yeah, y'all keep talking about my clothes. Hold up. And my bathrobe. Hold up. Hold and, up. And uh, whatever, whatever it is, I am promoting Chucky's behavior because oh. I decided, I decided not I'll to. Y'all gonna get up? I'm supposed to do it at home, and I've decided to say. Just stop. I have decided to say no. <laughs> I'm not going to deal with it. I'm going to allow someone else to deal with it. I'm going to promote Chucky's behavior and just stay away from it. Yes. But you can't, yes. Chucky can't go nowhere now. You can't now even, you can't even in the house. Neighbor's house. Because, you know, you, you, you ain't got to go Chucky's in the house. But because Chucky's in the house, now I have to change my behavior. Because not only is Chucky in the house, I'm in the house. Now I have to change my the way I'm thinking. If I don't change the way I'm thinking, Chucky is gonna run over me. <laughs> so Chucky's been running over you. <laughs> Chucky, all right. Chucky's been running over you from day one. See, because when Chucky gets to the school and I get Chucky, I have to remind Chucky that I medicate to come here. I medicate <laughs> to me down. And the teacher side of me up. And also, Chucky, while you're being defiant and acting a fool over here and you getting away with that at the house, I was looking for a job when I got this one, Chuck. <laughs> I, I believe in laying hands suddenly. Okay. Lord have mercy. Yeah, and good. Everybody, everybody needs I, um, If we can for a minute, I see that when we were having an early conversation, um, someone uh, posted that sometimes we as Christians do more harm to ourselves by refusing to give voice to our fears, to our depression and to our loneliness. That's, that's, so that's power. So that means that we're not being honest, number one. Number two, we have suppressed our feelings. And number three, we refuse to open up to anyone. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to take us full circle to a whole nother area because yeah. generationally, hello, what go on in the house, stay in the house. So oh. we been taught not to have this conversation. See, we've been taught not to have this conversation. And the other side, let me jump to the spiritual side. The spiritual side is, oh, you know, I've just been going through this. Just pray about it, baby. Okay, I done prayed and ain't nothing working. Now what you gonna do? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I done talked to God. I done gave 16 Hail Marys. I, 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 I done gone to confess. I done repented. I, 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 I know I don't have to keep repenting, but I feel like I gotta keep repenting because the same thing keeps coming up. Now what do I do? Help me be real because I got to deal with the enemy enemy. 
it's more yeah. it's more going on here than meets the eye and until mm. we teach you how to face you head on let's deal with you now all the devil this the devil you the devil because mm -hmm. you keep yielding to this thing you keep opening up to this thing we got to where the lady how can deal with something and everybody else dr right Yes, ma'am. And Dr. Burns, how, how can you deal? You know, I'm just I'm putting questions out there. How can you deal with something that you've suppressed so long? And uh, wait, that's part that's part one. Part two is you have suppressed it so long and that and you prayed about it, and now you're smiling through it all as if nothing has ever been wrong. That's what's happening in this pandemic. We have been taught church folks yeah. how to mask. We were wearing masks before the pandemic came. Exactly. That's Ooh. good. That's good. Ooh. That's good. Ooh. That's we very good. On for a long time because this is what we thought this was what we were supposed. This was what we were living up to when, again, it goes back to what I said before. I've prayed. I've fasted. Guess what? Still want to go get high. What do I do? Well, you got to keep praying. How much longer do I have to keep praying? No, you need some help now. You need I some need real help. Difference. I need some yeah. deliverance and I need yeah. some real answers. So how do how do I do that? What does that look like for me? For me, if I can just be real transparent, because <laughs> I came to the church with history, God took my history and turned it into his story. So that's what this is for. I, I, I came with some stuff. And so for me, I had to get sick and tired of being sick and tired, sick and tired of sick, being sick and tired of me. When we realize that we have to become, we're accountable for what we do. Right. We can't keep pointing the finger at what people did to us 10 years ago. I don't know anybody that can go back and retrieve what happened 10 years ago. Wow. Wow. I don't know anybody that can undo what happened 20 minutes ago. Wow. But I'm responsible. Wow. I'm accountable for what I do from this point forward. Was Another I, question. You know, they, they, if, if, and I'm using me as an example because I'm the best example for me. Right. I say, well, hey, I was getting high yesterday. Well, you know, the reason I was getting high was because so and so came over. Well, number mm -hmm. one, I let them in. You know what comes yeah. with the package. Mm -hmm. so when we become honest with ourselves and honest with where we are, it's nothing wrong with having a desire to do better, but we have to put some feet on that do better. What is it going to take for me to do better? I'm going to have to start looking and, and researching where I want to go. I don't know anybody that, 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 that wants to, uh, says that they, they desire a specific career. And, you know, I want to be an airplane pilot. <laughs> and I need to figure out how I'm going to fly. Because at the end of this, I have to meet, everything has to come together. And but what I'm hearing me. though, what I'm well, hearing you say. Let me say this, and guess what? I may not be able to do that by myself. Ah. So then mm -hmm. I have to pick up the phone and call a viable source. I have to pick up the phone and call me a Dr. Burns and say, girl, I'm a wreck right about now. But, 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 mm -hmm. how, but how, if people have generationally yeah. Um, have 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 been taught that you don't share, um, and that as believers in Christ you don't get depressed, or there must be something wrong with you. You know that that you or you you just stay there, and you just handle it, you just you just make it through. If if they've never even been told that that's just part of being human or their humanity, right. how how can they now? How do they even know now? How to even reach out? I mean, literally, they are with, they are within four walls now. How 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 do they? How can they even begin that that process if you know they're dealing with generations of not only seeing it but being told it, 
but now also living it and perhaps even teaching it? How, how do they break that cycle? The mm. it's personal. It's very personal. It's desire. It's it's a choice. It's a desire. Decision. Desire. Usually this day. Not not tomorrow. Not next month. That's some folks that say I was going to come to church, but I probably come next week. Choose ye this day. Today, I'm not going to keep living like this. Today, I can't. I just I can't go any further like this. And so, but, but right. But right there, Dr. Wright, you know, for some people that say they can't go any further like this. They but but pride and shame have such a grip on them that. They don't even know how. And so some people will choose to, to either self-medicate or try to kill themselves before just saying, hey, I need help. What I mean, what what can be done before people get to that kind of breaking point? You know, to say, you know what, I'm I'm I, I just give up on life. I, I'm just I just give up on all of it. I believe that the mm. One of the worst times of my life was as a child of God, knowing that I was saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, ever burning power and all that, loving God. But I found myself sitting in a room full of people and I was all by myself. That was the worst feeling that I could ever ever experience and I chose not to ever feel that again mm. because mm. there was a spirit of disconnect mm. I was separated from everything that had value to me we must find out what adds value to us mm. what brings you peace what brings you love what brings you joy? Well, I don't like nothing. Yeah, you do. You like something. You like something. And then, mm -hmm. and, and, and many times we hear people say, I'm looking for my purpose. Purpose is, is something that was intended to be. We all have purpose. Right. You're not here just to be hanging out. Right. There is a purpose for your life. And even in the midst of this pandemic, there are those that will say, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I finally found my purpose. And now, no, you keep doing your purpose. You have a purpose. You fine tune it. You, you, you work off the rough edges. You, you work in that purpose and do what you can to see how you can go to the next level with this purpose. And don't make excuses about, well, you know, we locked up now. Nothing we can do. The devil is a lie. <laughs> Excuses about why you're not doing. That's the time iron sharpens iron. That's the time you pick up the phone and you call somebody and say, "I'm, I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a dark place. I'm having mm. a rough time." Granted, you're right. There are those people that don't want to tell nobody that they're stuck. <laughs> Hold on. Let me let me let me um add some of these comments in here. They're saying Chucky is the reason why. That's my point. <laughs> number two, Chucky is the reason why I don't teach. Two two ways. Um, another comment that this is on, on another subject. Church folk shame you. Mm. They shame you into believing that you should only pray and that there's something wrong with you. Mm. Hmm. Church folks say, let me finish the, some of the comments here. And church folks say that that God doesn't give us fear. Um, let's see. Oh, wow. Trust. Let's let's deal with trust a little bit. Someone says we can't trust people. Another person, and all this is around trust. Mm -hmm. We share things with people. And that we trust, that we think we can trust, and then they share it with someone else. How do we get past that? How do we get past um, trusting or being wanting to trust someone or thinking you trust someone, and then you find out you can't? 
So now I'm going to put my pastor hat on. Scripturally, Nehemiah, when God gave Nehemiah instruction to rebuild the wall, the Bible says that he told no man nor beast what God had told him to do. This goes back to knowing our circle. When you know who's in your circle, then you know you can speak. Everybody in your circle can't hold your conversation. Mm. Everybody in your circle won't appreciate your conversation. Everybody in your circle won't hear your conversation. But as relationships are developed, you learn who in your circle, who will and who won't. Now, I'm going to go to the legal side so I can help whatever pastor or minister that's listening. There is what's called a fiduciary law. Mm, yeah. So as ministry leaders, when mm. something is given to us, we have a responsibility. If that person doesn't say, I'm going to kill you, or I'm going to kill the person down the street, I'm going to kill myself. You have a responsibility. That's to right. That's and right. Usually you can be held responsible or sued for running your mouth. Now I'm going to jump to another side. The other thing is this. We're having a conversation. Doc says to me, you know, last night this happened, that happened. And I'm like, girl, let me just pray with you. And we mm -hmm. okay. She's feeling like she's done the right thing. She shared with her friend. Dr. Bradford, let me let me tell you what happened. Doc yeah. called me and she said, but in the midst of this, Dr. Burns has walked off and she's feeling some kind of way. And in her heart of hearts, she says, I really appreciate her praying with me. That wasn't right. And I'm I'm glad. God can just forgive me because I I just was out of pocket. I was out of place. Please forgive me. I don't hear mm -hmm. that. I'm having a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. How do you tell something that God has forgotten? Because the word says that God takes that mm -hmm. and throws it into the deepest, darkest sea of forgetfulness to be remembered no more. So if God don't remember it and you and I are talking about it, one of us is lying. That, huh? Oh, well, see, you just stepped in right there. You know, I, um, and, and thank oh, you, both of you, for that. I, I, um, it's, it's so many levels on that. And, and I see you, Marcus Rogers, um, wants to know how, how do you break through to certain groups of people um, who covered up the roots of their issues? And this is, is so challenging because the truth is, so more people are hurting than they will ever admit that they are hurting. If they can't trust, let, uh, before, let's, before we deal with, with trifling friends, mm, oh. if, they if they can't trust their pastor, if yeah. they can't trust that, that, that brother, that sister in the church, you know, then, then where, where, do, where are people supposed to turn? You know, if their pastor is, is, is gossiping or shaming them for what they just, just go ahead and call it what it is. You know, <laughs> you know. I mean, go ahead and call it what it is, trifling. <laughs> you need to sit down somewhere. Yeah, yeah. just go ahead and call it what it is. Um, because that, there are go those ahead. that think that preaching is telling your story over the pulpit. That's not preaching. Yeah, that's that's preaching. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Call it what call it what it is. That's a call it what it is. Um, though, and I, I saw. Um, um, when do you I when saw, do you refer them to a licensed counselor? Yeah, but but um, because, it, that's a whole nother story in, in in the black community because yeah, we don't think we need any help. Yes, yeah. we don't even believe in counselors. And and I saw a couple of people on here that are from my hometown, and um and across by near um, one of the beauty shops, or near one of the, the funeral homes and the beauty shops when I was coming up. There was a there was a barbecue joint and 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 the drunks would sit out there with their paper bags, right? But and they and they sit there and they, one of them going to the store get get a bag and they all sit and everybody just would share share that one little bag, you know, and they all drink and and when none of them talk about the other, one, okay? And and that's what worldly folk know how to do. We mm -hmm. we don't even know and how they, to do it. Yeah. The, the world shows us better how to hold somebody's business 
than the church has shown us or how you hold people's business. You know, we don't, we, we, we scared to even touch or hug somebody in the church. And I'm talking about pre-COVID, all right? But, but <laughs> if you're in the street, you would see folk, you know, just a little bit that they have, they would share it. And, and when nobody looked on or looked down on because of it. But when you come now and where the body of believers supposed to be, you know, you would expect that whoever your pastor is, that most definitely you can confide in that source. But if you're not comfortable enough yet to talk to your pastor, there ought to be a brother or sister there who understands the struggle and can work walk with you through it, even before you say it. Because some of us don't even know how to talk about it yet. Go ahead. Burns, 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 Burns. You just talked about the brothers and sisters on the street that are sharing a bottle. Now, they're all on the same level, playing field, right? But it seems as if when we go to church, we have big eyes and little U's, mm. and we're not on the same playing field. Mm. And, and we expect, we're looking at other people that so, are supposed to be so high and mighty, mm. we can't add up or we don't um, reach their level, so we become, we suppress our feelings. And those who are so high, they look at those that are not as preachy or, or churchy as they are and say that they are not welcome. So that's why we, we suppress our feelings or suppress those who are supposedly lower, suppress their feelings because they can't reach that level. But what in, why are we so, why can't we be able, why are we not able before pre-COVID can't love on each other and say, okay, I've been there. Mm -hmm. I understand you. No, because we we can't be honest enough to share where we've been because we are so high. But at some point we have to say, I love you and I understand where you are because I've been exactly where you are. Here's my story. Here's what I'm, well, here's what I can help you. Here's how I can help you because I've been down that road. Mm -hmm. Now it's up to you. You know, I don't, it doesn't matter if you share my story because I'm sharing it every day. Mm -hmm. wow. Sharing a story not only frees you up, but it frees others up. Come on, come on. Yeah. So when you begin to share your story, you say, look, I'm free so you can be free. And not only will it be, uh, allow others to be free, it'll open up a world of difference in the church. So you can really love unconditionally because we have so many conditions on love. Right, right, right. Yeah, and I and Doctor Umbrella, I love you if you yeah. do this. Yeah, I, I love you when you do this. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I love you when you pay tithes. Come on. I love you when when you bring me something to eat. Come on here. No, 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 baby. I love you unconditionally because God told me to love you and God saved my soul. So I'm going to love you just the way God loves me. Right. Period. So how can we help each other? We can help each other by telling you our stories. Oh, you don't have to tell everything. But you can tell some things that will help somebody else. Right. And I, 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 I think we have to be sick and tired. I'm sorry, Dr. B. We have to be sick and tired of suppressing our feelings. We have to be sick and tired of being so masked that we are so make, made up. Mm clothes, hats, whatever, so made up that people can't really see who we are. At what point are we going to really show ourselves? Right, right. I'm tired. We ought to be so tired. If nothing else, COVID has really shown us how to show ourselves. Come on, somebody. I think I made a decision some time ago, I said, it's best to be transparent now because, you know, anymore when the folks grow up at your home going, they start sharing their stories. Somebody needs to look and say, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, she didn't do that. <laughs> because 
because everybody's covering up. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I think that we only have about five more minutes left, but I, I think um, Dr. Bradford, what, what you said and, and um, Dr. Wright, because it, in order for people to believe that a place is authentic, they have to know that the voice is talking to them is authentic. Yeah. And and so um but but we but we wow. have to be so much more intentional mm. as believers in Christ. And I saw where Yasmin Christian and apparently can hear her saying, you know, about you know, people, you know, if they're saved, why 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 are people really doing this? You know, the and her, her final her summation of her of her statement is essentially is like are, are were they just born saved or they just want people to think it that way. But I but I think that but but I think all of that continues to aid the deception that's in the mm. church. And when we are helping the deception, then we're not helping people to be free to be transparent, to be honest, mm -hmm. to, to be released um, um, from, from who they are um, or, and, and to walk in the fullness of that. Dr. Wright, I think that's one of the things that I remember when I, I first had an opportunity to experience your ministry, it was just just love yeah. that came, came through. You know, it, it's love that just simply breaks through. You know, that it breaks through yokes. You know, people, people know when that love is genuine. And, and I think it, I think so much of that is just missing today. I agree. I and agree. Important, so important. And, and we, again, we, we're, uh, the topic is purpose and, and, and promise. We have a purpose. God has made some promises over our life. Hmm. Now, whether or not we're gonna walk in those promises are up to us. There's two things God can't do. He can't lie and he can't fail. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to make a decision whether we're going to be a, a full partner or we're just going to be a share owner. Yeah. I want to be a oh, full Oh, that's partner. good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Melissa Quirk, you said that you don't expect everyone to be transparent. And, and I don't think so either. Mm -hmm. But I do think that persons who are in leadership if you're being called to cover other, other, you know, if you've been called to be the cover of the sheet, then <laughs> there, there needs to be some transparency about you. No, not, not among members because people are hurt, they're bruised. But, right. but the shepherd and the under shepherd, the chief, when you look at these, you know, the pastor, the, they, 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 there should be a level of transparency there that people right, can right, find right, right. safety. Right. Um, when they come and when they share. And as was said earlier, and that after you share, it ain't remember no more. It's gone. You know, it's gone mm -hmm. from that, that sea. But but right. we, we got we gotta do something um different about that. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And again, yeah. we have to be mindful who's in the circle. Mm -hmm. uh, the the life yes. the That's life right of those people in the circle. That's how you develop and you learn who you can and you cannot trust. Because yeah. everybody can handle your stuff. <laughs> Every, everybody can handle. I am a, uh, a Bible-based trauma-informed healer. <laughs> um, I like that. I'm say that again. Say that again. Wait, let me write that down. Trauma-informed healer. And I, 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 you know, we are uh, <laughs> uh, certified under the American Bible Institution. And, yeah. And when it first came up, it was just, I thought, wow, that's, that's intent. But after being locked down in, in a, in a place for a week with other folks and, 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 and I'll just share this real quickly. There was a woman there who was also we, going to We got 30 seconds. Oh, we okay. don't have enough time for that story. <laughs> <laughs> next, next week. Okay. Next week. Uh, Amen. Amen. Uh, some closing thoughts, Dr. Bradford, Dr. Wright. Um, um, I just want to say to everyone, thank you all for joining us. Go ahead. Let me, um, I just want to share oh, the promise. Please know God is always with us. Yes. God is always in control. God is all, talking about sharing our stories. God is always watching. Yes. And God is always victorious. If we don't know anything else, we have to understand that God is with us. Yes. 
Dr. Wright, we're 10 more seconds. Be encouraged. You yeah. are important. You are valuable. You are important. We need you. And we just pray today that you will look up. Mm. Amen. God bless you all. Be encouraged. There's promise and purpose. Thank you, my sisters. I love you. Love you all who joined us. God bless.